brief intro. Dan, thank you for being here. Uh, I've been working with Dan for close to two years now. Um, we initially sought out an aquifer source next to our water system. We didn't find anything with a quantity or quality, unfortunately. But um, Dan's here to answer um, questions and, and go over the treatment process that we have planned and to go over any frequently asked questions from the community. So Dan, please. Okay. All right, um, I'm gonna share my screen. I have a few, a couple slides that I'm gonna present. I'm gonna to try to keep the presentation to no more than five minutes or so. I'm gonna leave some time for, for some questions and answers. Uh, but my goal here is just to, just to provide a general update for the board and the public here. Um, and give me a moment here. It's been a while since I've used the Zoom link to share. <clears throat> I think I'm sharing. There you go. Got it. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so the first bullet, uh, uh, Jim, you kind of stole my thunder there. <laughs> uh, so last year, you know, Wright Pierce um, uh, looked at the investigate the feasibility of developing a groundwater supply as a replacement for the river source, and we weren't able to find a productive aquifers and in, in the appropriate quantities needed to con consider it feasible to replace the river supply. So at that point, we had to pivot back to the treatment plan upgrade options, uh, which have been studied uh, over the years. Uh, we've been focusing on reviewing the feasibility to develop a ba ballistic clarification process, which has worked well in Summersworth at a full scale design since 2006. And uh, Wright Pierce did that design work and I was a staff engineer at the time working on that project. So as part of that um, analysis and screening, we've, cons we're, we've been considering alternatives for the manganese um, oxidation and removal step as part of that process. And the overall goal is to kind of retain the existing filters and chemical fee system that's part of the plant now but add this, uh, this new pretreatment process to target removal of the color, the high turbidity in the river, and the, obviously the manganese, um, which is elevated, um, particularly this time of year when the river is low. So the treatment plant upgrade objectives, um, you know, remove the color, dissolved organic carbon in the manganese, and really it's about improving the, the quality of the water for the users. Uh, removal of the manganese and the organic carbon will, will lower the chlorine demand. So it should lower the amount of chlorine that has to be added to the water to maintain a chlorine residual in the system. So that will be an operational benefit. Um, and for those that are more sensitive to the chlorine taste and smell, uh, that should be an improvement post upgrade. And obviously consideration of operational cost and efficiency. Um, you know, because we're adding a treatment process, we have to add chemistry to remove manganese and also the organics in the water. Uh, there's a cost associated with that. And the goal here is, um, which I'll get into on the next slide, is to evaluate and try to optimize how much chemistry is added to minimize the overall cost uh, for the long-term operation of the treatment. So short-term plan, uh, environmental review, that's a federal requirement, which we completed um, this summer that's related to the bond funding through the SRF program. Um, um, once I heard about the, the particularly high issues of the manganese, we initiated, a, um, I put together a sampling plan, which we started today. Um, we're gonna be doing uh, weekly raw and treated water samples. Did our first uh, sample round this morning, coordinated with STAR at the plant. And we're gonna be collecting data for the month of August while the river's still low before the rains come back in the, in the fall. Uh, but we're gonna reassess in September. Uh, right now we're scheduled to complete a two to four week pilot study using the uh, ballasted uh, clarification process. Um, that's a uh, pilot trailer and, and equipment um, that's supplied by Kruger. Uh, it's a subsidiary of Veolia. So we are, um, kind of in the final stages of finalizing that pilot agreement with them. And we've been coordinating with the electrician that the folks use at the plant to provide temporary power for that pilot test and so forth. So that's gonna be ongoing. So right now we're scheduled uh, end of October, last week of October, and we wanna wrap this up by November, uh, by Thanksgiving. 
The purpose of the pilot test is to demonstrate the treatment performance and chemical dosing for a full scale design. Um, also this fall in parallel, we're gonna be completing the topographic survey. We have an idea where the building is gonna go. Um, geotechnical borings are doing all that preparatory work for the design. Uh, once the piloting's complete, there's gonna be a period of a few weeks before the laboratory data comes back and we get a pilot report. We're gonna incorporate that into a preliminary design report. From a schedule standpoint, I'm looking at December through March. And that will include kind of uh, for, uh, formalize the treatment recommendations, how we're gonna handle the waste streams on the process, provide updated cost estimates and a construction timeline for the project. Uh, final design and permitting, I uh, put a placeholder here, uh, March through July, that will be firmed up with a preliminary design report. And then construction, uh, assuming we get the um, project out to bid next summer, around uh, August, um, we would be probably awarding the contract sometime in September, end of September, and hopefully starting construction on next fall. And obviously we're anticipating about a year of construction. Uh, one thing that's in there is the equipment and procurement. So one of the things I spoke to James about today is that we're gonna be having a conversation with the drinking water program about strategies to potentially pre-purchase that equipment um, because it's probably gonna have a 35 to 40 week lead time to try to accelerate the schedule uh, on the construction side of things. So that's the, the basic recap. I guess I'll pause right here and uh, uh, entertain any questions from the board. So uh, 35 week lead time for the equipment, that's what, eight months, nine months? Um, yeah, I think we really should uh, get on the, the pre-buying program to make sure that we're not, we have an empty building with no equipment in it <laughs> come, come time. Um, so yeah, the, um, my main question was about the timeline, which you answered very well um, and, and in, in good detail. So optimistically or conservatively, everything should be built and operational by November of 2024. Right, that's, and again, I qualify that to some extent. Um, I mean, we're still in the pandemic, pandemic issues with supply chain. You know, I feel like things are, are, are trending back towards normal, <laughs> um, but we're still, still seeing a significant lead time on electrical equipment, generators, and things like that. Um, so, I'm, you know, under normal circumstances, pre-pandemic, I would say that's a, that's a conservative schedule. Um, I think once we get to the preliminary design report presentation to the board, um, I'll have a better handle on that. Um, and be able to speak with a little bit more confidence on that schedule. Anybody else have any questions? Mm -hmm. No, my, my concern too is going to be that timeline because we know we're going to get asked and Dan, I think Noah said you laid that out perfectly in the, in the presentation. So thank you. I think, um, can, we get, can we get a copy of that timeline? Like just email us the yeah. PowerPoint or... or yeah, just so yeah, like to, just so slides to, over to Germany can port it to Right. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, um, I think we're all set. I really appreciate you coming in and, and explaining that, and uh, hopefully that'll answer some yeah. questions. As we as we channel. get further into as we get further into the process, I'd be more than happy to you know more on a routine basis um, you know give these updates and and make sure you guys are, are, are well informed of the process. Because, you know, there's a lot of technical items here that, um, you know, it's not, not easy to explain, but I'll well, do my best. My, my hope is, I mean, this is as bad as it's been in about five or six years. I'm hoping going forward that over the next two years of getting it planned and approved and built and everything like that, that it won't be such a huge issue next year that we have, you know, a bunch of questions and complaints and stuff like that, that we can kind of go about business as normal into getting the, getting it built. And then, you know, then it won't be even a question anymore at all. So. Right. In, in the process, like I said, we, we know it will work. It works in Summersworth. Um, 
It is a newer generation of the process. So there's been some modifications from a design standpoint to improve the efficiency. And there's some other things that we want to test. Um, but, you know, we know it will work. Um, it's just about, you know, showing, doing a demonstration test, collecting up data so we can have some confidence on certain design characteristics, um, chemical dosing, so we can estimate the total annual cost of operation and those sorts of things that, that are gonna be an interest to, to the, you know, for the budgeting. Terrific, well, we will call upon you as soon as there's some, uh... So updates to be made. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank, thank you for you. yours.